so yeah, we're back this week, and um, obviously more about this <clears throat> this business of consumption, consuming, sorting out the difference between want and need, and what's really going on. How much do we need? How much do we think we need? How much do we really need? All, all of that, you know, it's it's in that space. It's in that space. That complex, very complex dimension of our lives. Yeah. You know? You know, how many resources do we use? There's so many angles. Well, I want to speak a little bit more about food because it's a big one for all of us. We kind of left off on that um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it's such a big one for us. And, you know, in all of these areas and all of the, uh, the invitations that we offer to you, you know, and, and along the way here <clears throat> to take a, a closer look. A closer look and, a, and more of a, a feeling into one aspect uh, after another aspect of your experience, you know, things that aren't really foreign to us, but <clears throat> let's go in further. Let's zoom in a little bit more. You know, it's really so much of the practice is about that. You know, and so much of the practice is about being willing to turn toward aspects of our experience that we'd rather not turn toward. You know, that's actually a lot of the, that's actually a lot of what the practice is. It takes a little bit of courage because we're not wired to turn toward the difficult. We're not. We're wired to want the pleasant, want to keep the difficult away. We organize our lives around that a lot. Do you know? Yeah. And we know that there's rough stuff out there, but yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes we just hope in meditation that all of that stuff will just go away and never arise anymore. Yeah. But that hasn't worked so far. Right? Yeah. And the invitation, and this is the Buddha's invitation. He said, it is possible to move to a deeper level of wellness, you know, and, and wholeness and, 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 uh, and ease. But you have to be willing to turn toward some of the things that you'd rather not turn toward. Yeah. You know, Susan has that wonderful expression, love everything into the fold of mindfulness. Yeah, 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 that's a nice idea. Yeah, but there, we just want some things to go away. And a lot of our, a lot of our, um, a lot of our habits, a lot of our habits, some of those things that we kind of do not quite consciously, not quite consciously, are, are operating in the in the food space in our relationship to food. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of our habits and our patterns actually exist in the absence of mindfulness. It's almost like mindfulness needs not to be there. I don't want mindfulness to be there. I kind of want to do this thing and not really pay attention to what I'm feeling as I'm doing it. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Reaching for like the third or fourth piece of chocolate or the, third, or the you know, something that, you know, you know, there's an impulse there. There's a part of you that wants that, but you don't really want to feel what you're feeling as you're doing that. Yeah, this is true for all of us. You know, we have these, yeah, mm, uh, 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 like we're partitioning off what I'm doing with what I'm actually feeling and what, what, what actually what's happening in the body. But you see, even what's happening in the mind, I'd rather not, thank you very much. I just want to eat this thing. I just want more. You know, I just want, you know, to pretend, to pretend it's not going to hurt me if I eat this, if, if I eat more of this stuff. I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot that goes on in that space. And so much of the practice, and it's true with this as well. I'm going to give you a very specific example. So much of the practice is being willing to slow down a little bit, pause a little bit, and feel into it. We'd rather not. We're moving at a mile a minute. You know, it's like, well, I don't want to stop. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel it. I'd rather not. You know? I'd rather not. <clears throat> and the whole point of it, well, why do that? Why, why are we doing it? We need to understand, we need to, we need to have the answer to this. Why would I want to turn towards something that's difficult? 
because it's there, as the Buddha reminds us, that we begin to see what we're up to, what we're actually up to, and how it actually feels. So we need, then the organism can learn what it wants to keep, what patterns are feel good and I want to keep around, and which patterns are like, ooh, I've been doing this thing, but now I see it doesn't feel very good. So that, and that's where wisdom can start to make some changes, some changes in what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Take, we have to take a closer look at those impulses, some of those impulses around food. And the simplest way, you know, you've all done, you've all, I think most of you have done an eating meditation somewhere along the way, but how often you, have you done it at home? I'll bet not very often. How many of you even pause? You know, this, this, this is this pause, pause, and pause, right? How many of you even take a moment? You know, there used to be, I don't maybe some of you still do. In the old days, when I was a kid, it used to be grace, you know, saying grace. Okay, the Buddhist grace is just pause for a moment. Pause for a moment. Appreciate for a moment. Of course, appreciate. You know, I want to bring some gratitude in there. You know, look, where did this food come from? All that, right? Look. This is amazing. This is amazing. Okay. Even that, we tend not to do that. You know, there's a sense of, yep, yep, let's eat. Manja. Yeah, let's just eat. Right? We're on, we're on to impulse already. You know, instead of like, okay, here we go. We're about to eat. I'm about to put something in my mouth. Yeah. And what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna encourage you to do. You know, play, play with this, right? It's a slow down. We can't do this with a whole meal, but for a couple of bites, the first couple of bites, right? Just to take something slowly. Close your eyes and set it on your tongue. Don't even start chewing for a moment. There's a whole world of experience that will happen right there. It will come to you if you just pause. First of all, the saliva is happening all by itself. I'm not making that happen. You know, the body is already responding to this. You know? But also, what's the mind doing? What's the mind doing? You'll notice, you, you, you'll notice all of this, right? Okay, this thing's, but actually I'm already, I'm already wanting to get on with the with, with the neck, with the next bite. And there's already a speed, a kind of a speed in there, and there's a kind of it's a kind of a, it's kind of a um, uh, wanting, a kind of wanting. Cra it's craving, craving. <laughs> you know, there's this, there's a this sense in Buddhism that craving is is the source of a lot of our dukkha. But how often do we actually stop and feel craving? This is an opportunity to do it, just like this. You'll, this is craving. This is what the Buddha talked about. Watch this. It's on your tongue, and the mind is going, oh. oh. It's kind of like, have you ever seen a baby bird with its mouth open? And the mother's feeding the baby bird. Have you ever had that image with that? Yeah. We all have that baby bird in us. We do. We do. But we don't feel that all the time. But it's there. And it's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, this is craving. No, yeah? this is craving. I don't, and if you stay with this for another moment, if you actually take this as a meditation, it's a powerful meditation, powerful meditation, you will notice that you will notice this. It's this is proxy for a lot of things in life, okay? The taste of the food, the wonderful taste of the food, there's a whole world of taste there too that we, we tend to kind of bypass in our speed, right? The taste of the food is not enhanced at all by the craving. Check it out. There's no value added at all to the craving. That doesn't mean that the taste goes away. It 
taste is is what it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. But then there's this other thing, which is craving, wanting the next bite. What you, oh, you feel it, it literally like a, almost a lunging, it almost is like, right? It's like, oh, what a primal thing this is. This is a deep, deep part of our nature, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so just slowing down, we, we bear witness to something very primal in us around food. Um, very primal, you know? And a lot can show up there. A lot can show up there about how fast we eat, how much we eat, and how we just don't really want to be mindful about the process. You know? and it's such a simple thing. Just slowing down for a couple of bites as if it were a really cool experiment. And, and, and understanding you're part of our true nature. You know, we sometimes think true nature is some, something fancy and far. It's right here, your true nature. <clears throat> right here when you're eating. You know? It's all about that, that relationship, again, between consumption, how much, not just how much, but the way in which we consume. <laughs> and the way in which we go slightly unconscious in the way we consume. Yeah, yeah, so powerful. And I really, I really encourage you all to, to play with that, to play with that, to explore that, okay? Yeah, and we have, we'll have many opportunities, right? Because we have to eat, we eat every day. And uh, it's like, wow, so much has been going on here. And I don't, I've never really paid this much attention to it, you know? So a lot is revelatory when you do that in the sense that it's re revealed, a lot is revealed. When you simply pause, slow it down, close the eyes too, there's too much going on out here. There's just, you know, wow. So I would encourage you to play with that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll, um, we'll meditate together now. Okay, so opening up the body. And gradually slowing down. And when you're ready, lightly closing the eyes. And I'm beginning to feel into the breath, the wave-like rhythm of the breath.
and of course inviting caring attention. Into the atmosphere of your practice. The mind goes away, notice that. It can be turned with kindness. But with interest.
and soften.
Mm -hmm. Lost your nuts. Tension setting back. A bit more. And 